My name is Jermaine Sean Smith. I define hope um, through what is a feeling um, or an expectation of something to happen, um, something good, something that inspires you to do more, something that uh, allows for us to really grab the idea of what a future could be, um, what's ahead of us, and the ability to make that our reality. And so hope is what springs from us many times when we wake up, when we face a challenge, when we overcome something, we have that undying, yearning need to be hopeful. I actually think of a thing, and it's a rubber band, elasticity, having the ability to bounce back from a thing. Um, you know, one thing that really comes to mind is one of my favorite poems, and it's by Sir William Ernest Hensley, and it's Invictus. In there he says, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud, but under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the night finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll, I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. And I believe resiliency encompasses, no matter how straight the gate, no matter how bloody your head may be, you are the master of your faith and you are the captain of your soul. The most resilient person I know has to go to uh, a lady named Ivy Bernice Smith. Ivy Smith is my grandmother. Um, she raised me from three months old and she defines, defines resiliency to me because she migrated to this country and uh, she was going to nursing school and she was in the parking lot and a car hit her as she was getting out of her car and she lost her leg, had to be amputated. And from that age in her early 40s, she raised seven children, um, about 21 grandchildren now. But having her every day make sure that her disability wasn't the thing that allowed for her to make excuses, um, but rather the impetus for her to do more, to, do, to go harder, and to make sure that everyone was able to be taken care of. She is the definition of resiliency to me. And so whenever I'm going through a hard time, I look down at my left foot and I look down at, at, at it and say, if she did it, she was my inspiration. If she did it, then my grandmother, you know, it being that person, then I can too take that same path to making sure that I'm being resilient and that I'm fighting back and that I'm not making excuses. And even as she's an older young lady now, as I like to call her, Ivy remains just as resilient as she was years ago, inspiring all of her kids, her grandkids and community to be resilient despite circumstances, be like that rubber band, be elastic. My hope is that our hopes continue to grow. Let me explain. When we're in a place of desperation, sometimes we hope for, let's say, a glass of water because we're thirsty. My hope is that we hope for a glass of champagne because we have lots of water, we have lots of juice, but we want the best. And in this case, my hope is that we can get past the the, the hopes of just having people um, getting jobs. Now we can hope for people to get thriving opportunities. We can hope less for our children to get, you know, the bare minimum education or just an education as it is, but now the best education. So my hope is that we continue to hope for more, continue to hope to grow, continue to hope to 
continuously thrive and get better. And so, you know, the hope, and maybe this is the cheat code, is asking for a hope that only grows stronger over time.